it's pretty crazy that you can look something up online and then you can walk outside at some specific time of night and look up at some specific part of the sky and you know that at that time at that part of sky you're going to see sunlight at night that's reflected off of a satellite phone antenna that's hurtling through space in orbit around Earth and this entire thing can be predicted to the nearest second. Groups of satellites, or satellites that were all put up for the same purpose, I guess, are actually called constellations, like constellations of stars in the sky, because you can point to where all the satellites are in the sky if you knew or could see them. Now, the Iridium constellation is a group of 72 communication satellites, and they all orbit Earth in uh, polar orbits. So they're going from the South Pole to the North Pole to the South Pole to the North Pole, and they're all slightly spaced off from each other. And those satellites actually provide full coverage over Earth's surface for satellite phones, of all things. This is what the Iridium satellites look like. I mean, if the Iridium satellites were hand-sized and made of cardboard. But it's got a big solar array up top, and then it's got the main body of the satellite. And then the most important thing for the purposes of this video are these three big panels underneath. And here they're made of tinfoil, but on the actual satellite they are large uh, flat panel antennas. And that's actually what's providing all the communication support. These things are designed and put up into space so that we can use sat phones. These antenna panels are actually extremely reflective. So when the satellites fly around Earth, they reflect a patch of sunlight back to the dark side of the planet and it maps out a swath on Earth's surface where the light passes and if you're anywhere along that line you can see the reflection from the ground and it looks like a star that's moving and then gets really bright when the reflection is pointing straight at you and then it fades away as the satellite keeps moving and its orientation changes such that it's no longer reflecting light towards your location. These satellite positions and angles as they fly overhead are really well known so people with more compute power than me can actually plot all of these trajectories and figure out what light is going to be bouncing where and they can actually figure out when iridium flares are going to hit certain locations on earth like days in advance they have all of it predicted and you pump in your location and it says are there going to be any flares visible from this spot are there any of those swaths of light that are going to pass over me in the next few days and you can get a, an answer I often use the website heavens-above.com because it gives you a lot of information like the exact swath that the light will be mapping out on Earth. So I guess if you really wanted to travel right to the center to get the brightest light possible you could, but that's probably overkill. It also will show you the uh, exact arc through the sky that the satellite will take so you know when, literally to the second, when, uh, where it's going to be in the sky. This, the, these predictions are phenomenal. Uh, you can also get lighter weight things. There's an app that I have called Flare Finder. I think it's a free app somewhere. Once you know where the flare is going to be in the sky and when the flare is going to be in the sky, then you get to have the fun part. You actually get to go watch the flare and or take a picture of it. You're going to want to take the tripod outside well in advance, probably before it gets dark, and make sure that you've got the camera charged and the lens on it and all that sort of stuff that you don't want to forget later. And once it gets dark, you need to focus the camera. You need to make sure that you're pointed at the right part of the sky and keep in mind that if you set up the camera too far in advance the sky will appear to shift and you, the camera won't be pointed at the right spot anymore so you're going to have to readjust the camera aim right before you actually take the picture. I would set an alarm for five or ten minutes before the flare is going to go off that way you can go outside and your eyes can adjust a little bit and uh, you can get ready to watch for the flare going overhead. Now the real key is that as soon as you see a moving light going across the sky that's the satellite before it has reached full brightness it's just starting to hit you with the edge of that beam that it's sort of shining across Earth's surface that's when you want to open the shutter of the camera so you'll open the shutter and it'll streak across the sky and uh, you don't need to do anything during this part which is good because it's a cool thing to watch and it'll streak across the sky it'll get really bright and then it'll dim back off and as soon as it dims away and stops emitting any light, you turn off the, uh, the camera, or close the shutter and turn off the camera, 
and you're done capturing your image. If all went to plan, you'll get some really awesome streak images like these, where you can see the entire path of the flare as it gets bright and moves across the sky and then fades away. I think they're pretty cool. When you're taking long exposures of the night sky, you might even get bonus satellites. This picture of the flare from the satellite Iridium-10 also captured the trails from two Soviet-era communication satellites. I have this three foot length of quarter 20 threaded rod because it's the closest thing to a giant worm gear or lead screw that I could get. And uh, if you put a nut on this, you can spin it pretty darn quick. And uh, it moves linearly much more slowly than, uh, than you're spinning it. So if you're trying to take the uh, rotational uh, motion from like a motor and make a camera move from one end of the slide to the other in about an hour, that's your best bet.